there was a driver driving along. There was a thin, and the lady behind him was tailgating really <coughs> aggressively. And there was a traffic light that changed to yellow, and he probably could have zoomed himself through it, but decided probably the best thing to do was to stop, so he stopped, and the woman behind him, uh, of course, had to stop very quickly, too, and started shouting obscenities and making gestures and doing the whole shebang. And then there's a knock on her window, tap, 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 and there's a police officer. And he takes her in and <laughs> does the fingerprints and the whole shebang, and a couple hours later, he comes back to down to the <coughs> cell and says, all right, you're free to go with, because you had bumper stickers that said coexist and what would Jesus do? I just assumed it was a stole, you'd stolen the car. <laughs> I got you going there, didn't I? <coughs> so this story is a funny way to illustrate that sometimes there's kind of a wide gap between who we want to be and how we show up. Oh, I forgot she had a bumper sticker that said, follow me to Sunday school. <laughs> now, I don't know if it's a natural tendency or if it's culturally ingrained, but I think most of us like to put our best face forward, right? And we shy away from sharing our failures, except for with our closest confidence, right? And our counselor, of course. And that's why I always think it's funny. You know, you're in a job interview and, and they say, what's one of your weaknesses? And you're going, I'm not telling you. <laughs> And it's ridiculous because who actually is going to tell them some, you know, tell them an actual weakness, somebody who you want a job from, right? So most of us will figure out how to spin that question and make it look good, or, you know. It's and HR people know that we do this, but they and we they, we still ask the question. I think it's so silly. Um, and daring greatly. Uh, Brene Brown talks about culture versus strategy and how that is the business's world. Big debate on which is more important. Culture, strategy. Strategy is the game plan. You know, the 10-year plan, how we're going to get there or whatever. And culture is the way we do things. She also notes that she has yet to find a strong argument for strategy. Culture always wins. And the truth is, is we like habit and comfort and in general consider change distastefully. Um, not always. I mean, change is good. Yeah, yeah, okay, but um, so usually the way that it's always been done often wins. Uh, but that culture isn't always healthy. Cultural taboos and norms keep us from expressing ourselves authentically. They keep us in a rut, because that's the way it's always been done. And they keep us from asking how we can do better. Because the way we've done it is always was good enough for my grandpa. Have you heard the story about the lady who always cut off the end of the ham. She always cut off the end of the ham. For those of you who didn't heard the story, some of you have heard the story. She always cut off the end of the ham, and one day her husband goes, well, why do you always cut off the end of the ham before you put it in, in the oven? She's like, I don't know. It's the way my mom always did it. She called up her mom, and her mom says, well, I don't know. It's the way grandma always did it. She called up grandma, and she said, grandma says, this is the biggest, my ha this is the biggest size pan I had. So when we look at our values and how we show up and we notice that there's a gap between 
who we want to be, like our bumper stickers, and who, how we show up sometimes. This ties in with that disengagement and disconnection that is part of that unworthiness struggle that we've been talking about. And that gap, the space between the values we aspire to and the values we actually act on, right? So those are our aspirational values and how we show up. And like the person in the story at the beginning, it's, it's common. We all make mistakes. We all have moments or more than moments where we're not showing up at our, as our best Christ shiny light. So, but this engagement happens a lot because <coughs> when someone who's a leader lifts up certain values, and then you see their behavior is counter to that. <laughs> And if they don't do it, whoever that leader is, <coughs> why should I? And this is one of the many reasons people feel disconnected from a lot of different institutions. But since we're in church, we'll talk about religion. <laughs> um, a lot of people feel disconnected from religion because they see abuse, corruption, lies. And the truth is, those kind of things are going to happen when absolute perfection is what is expected. This is not how we roll in unity because we don't want to do that, but you've, you've read the newspapers, you know. No one can live up to an ideal of absolute perfection. No one can. And so when that's the expectation and there's no room for anything else, then you have all these unhealthy ba behaviors of covering it up. If we could just say, you know, I made a goof up, can we fix it? And we can move on? Things wouldn't get nearly as awful as they do. We've all been down that road, right? So, I say, why don't we create a culture instead of improvement, of freedom, to admit incorrect mistakes, of transparency, not just in religion, no, it's just in all of our lives. Okay, I made a goof up, how can I do it better? Brene writes, spiritual connection and engagement is not built on compliance. It's the product of love, belonging, and vulnerability. And so this is why, part of the reason why I share my first personal stories about things that I've had happen in my life and struggles I've overcome and, and those things with you because I want to make clear that you can make a misstep on the journey and that doesn't mean that you're kicked off the, the path. You just pick yourself up, figure out what's the most important thing to do, dust off, and continue moving ahead. M learning something, hopefully not making that goof up again, but you know, if you do, it's okay. You probably learn something the second time you make that mistake, right? So when we engaged in developing our mission and vision for our community, it was in part to help us figure out how we want to steer the ship. And our vision is the highest vision of who we are and how we want to show up, knowing that that's where we're aspiring to. We're on a process, right? And the mission is part of that, is that strategy part of how we're going to get there, something to aspire to. Not to be condemned by missing. We just keep doing better next time, keep doing better next time, right? So when I interviewed with the board of our church to come here. They asked me very good questions. I was very impressed with the very good questions that they asked me. You should have heard Dorothy Brill and me. But she's good. Um, but one of the questions that they asked me was about how I would grow our community and our bank account, among many other questions. And this is a strategy question. And my answering strategy wasn't really about strategy, it was about shifting culture. Or we could say consciousness instead of culture. I said that my goal was to give people tools to raise their own consciousness. I can't raise anybody else's consciousness but my own, right? But, and I believe that that's the core of what we do to help make our world and our lives better is to raise our consciousness. Now, of course, 
as we are all becoming more and more authentically who we are, our Christ selves, our God selves, engaging in being the best of us who we can be, that other stuff takes care of itself. But I didn't want to say, well, we're going to have, we're going to focus on these parts because if you go upstream, to me, raising consciousness of each of you having a better and better life is what's most important. And this is how we continue to look at, instead of being like looking at the little, the, you know, the, the downstream parts and the, how it showed up in the end part, let's go and look at who we really want to be. Let's take the leap, mind the gap, jump over the gap to who we really want to be and just keep aiming for that. Let's keep aiming for that, knowing that we're going to make goof ups, we might trip, we're going to keep aiming for that. So when we take the time to do our spiritual practice, which is what it all comes down to, we put fear, worry, unworthiness, lack, all of those things, we put it aside, and then we put it aside again and again, and we begin to see a more enlightened response to whatever the situation may be. Because if we can respond not out of our lack, if we can respond not out of unworthiness <coughs> or worry or fear, I gotta tell you, there's a lot of fear going around in the world right now. How can we not respond out of fear? How can I respond out of trust? How can I respond out of love? Because we each have the wisdom in the core of us, in the core of our being. We have wisdom. Remember, wisdom is one of our 12 powers. It is there whether you know it and acknowledge it or not. So that wisdom is in the core of you, and that wisdom knows the best course of action. Now, the hitch, of course, is that it's covered with layers of cluttered consciousness and misbeliefs and all of that other stuff. And it can be difficult to change it from fear and distrust to a desire to understand. But it's also hard to keep change from keeping up appearances to authentic and vulnerable. And that's, all of that is why we're doing this prayer vigil on Tuesday. So we can focus our energies on peace, on prosperity, on well-being for everybody. And we can release fear and worry and hype. And we leave it at the door, at the outer door. I don't even want it in the hallway. <laughs> and if you're not quite released yet, if you haven't quite gotten there, that's okay. That's why we're having a prayer vigil. You can face it until you make it. Okay? You don't fake it until you make it. Faith it. If you have 1% belief that it's going to be okay, that life, that I don't need to be worried, that there can be peace and prosperity and well-being in the world. If you have 1% faith, Hopefully you have more than that. But if you have even 1% faith, let's just vote for that. Vote for that 1%. Look at that 1% of faith. Believe that. Ignore the rest. And faith it. And it will grow. Whatever you water grows, right? And so, yes, we all have a gap between how we show up and who we want to be. And those of you who don't, I'd like to go see you walk on water that's not frozen. <laughs> because I knew you were going to go there as soon as I, well, I walk over there. Um, <clears throat> we all have a gap. It just happens. So the invitation is to acknowledge it, just to let it be okay that it exists, that we make goof ups, and that we move to continue to move forward to bridge the gap, to make it a little smaller through prayer, through meditation, through our spiritual practice, 
and through becoming more and more of authentic who we are, who we've come here to be.